Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. Start of the work week here is upon us. 1014 a.m. California time here. June 2nd, 2025 is the date. Our latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.7 earthquake there in the Southern California. Still got a, a decent swarm of quakes up in Idaho around the Sawtooth Fault System. We'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been seeing on the social media site here. Mount Etna erupted again. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit of eruptions here with this volcano. This one a little bit more dramatic looking. Uh, I believe they had a little bit of pyro uh, pyroclastic flows due to a collapse here of one of the, um, I believe it's the north side of that uh, little summit area. Uh, spewed out some lava downhill. And uh, quite a few tourists up there uh, had to take off on a run. Pretty scary. They were uh, awfully close. A little bit too close for comfort for me. But uh, some beautiful images coming out of the uh, Italy area. This is a, a very active volcano. In fact, one of the world's uh, most active volcanoes here. Seems as though they have a, a number of eruptions each year. Sometimes during the year, uh, a couple of eruptions during each month. So this is nothing, uh, nothing new. Very active volcano there. But, uh, you know, it's making its rounds there on social media right now. Uh, because of the uh, tourists in the uh, area when, when it erupted. But uh, no doubt it will continue to erupt, I'm sure, many times this year again. Uh, looking at the uh, earthquake activity out here, of course, I believe we're still underneath a proton event. Let me see what that's looking like. Yeah, we're still still got uh, some protons affecting the ionosphere, mainly across the northern polar regions there. This is not uh, Aurora map. This is just the... Uh, Elevated protons there across the northern portion of the globe. Uh, let's check out California here. Last night, a little bit of movement there on the Hayward Fault. It doesn't look like anything has popped up on there yet today. Three earthquakes there from yesterday. Uh, up into northern California here. This one earthquake from yesterday, I believe, as well. So that means, uh, well, things are quiet right now across the Pacific Northwest and uh, Northern California as well. The Garlock Fault Shear Zone, still seeing some movement. Nothing above 2.5 um, far as recent activity goes. There's that one earthquake from yesterday on the Hayward Fault, uh, but the majority of 2.5 and above up there in Idaho. That is the uh, Sawtooth Fault System. Got about 13 earthquakes or so. If we go back the last 30 days, over 100 earthquakes in the area of the Sawtooth Fault System. That uh, if I remember right, produced a, a decent-sized earthquake back in 2019. I think it was a, uh, I think it was a six-pointer. Uh, I better double-check that and see here. We're gonna go back and just look here at the uh, little bit of historical data for 5.0 and above uh, for this area of Idaho because it's uh, it's obviously uh, stirring up something up there right now. Uh, let's bring this up. Kind of have to guess where Idaho is up here. I wish they would uh, have it uh, set up a little bit differently here. You used to click on here and you could select the map layout, what you want, but there's no option as uh, far as that goes here now. But that should cover the Idaho area. Sawtooth Fault System right here. Uh, that, uh, okay, it was... Yeah, it was 2020, 6.5, so a little bit larger than than uh, what I originally said there. I thought it was a 6.1. There was a number of six-pointers out there in 2020. Uh, that's a, a decent earthquake. And far as history goes, it looks like it's the largest one in this area and roughly around the same location where we're seeing that aftershock act. I guess it's aftershock activity or just further increase in pressure out here. Uh, in the region of the Sawtooth Fault System. Further to the east here, a number of earthquakes as well. 6.9 back in 1983. That's a decent-sized earthquake. Off of the, uh, I think it's a Lost River Fault, Willow Creek Hills Strand. There are numerous, numerous fault systems leading up here, up towards the Yellowstone area. But Idaho, they can get some big earthquakes up there for sure. I, I don't know what this swarm of earthquakes is leading to right now. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, definitely got uh, a decent amount of earthquake activity and not microquakes. These are all, uh, they're above 2.0, which makes me think they're 
Now, I don't think we've seen any one-pointers. Let me see. Now, oh, there's been a number of ones. It looks like they're reporting those. Sometimes it's hard to tell if they're going to actually uh, report those smaller quakes in there. But uh, either way, we'll continue to watch that. A little bit of activity stretching across the uh, mountains here of Utah, down across the Garlock Fault shear zone, where the current earthquake is. Um, nothing major going on there across the San Andreas Fault for now, but look at these pair of earthquakes on each side of the plate boundary. That's a little odd, except for this one right here. But when you see earthquake activity like this, uh, that makes me think that this thing's about ready to go uh, in terms of larger movement. But hard to say. Just got to watch that. Uh, San Andreas Fault, obviously, very well primed for some larger earthquake activity. A uh, quick glance at uh, Yellowstone National Park shows a whole lot of nothingness. Maybe some earthquakes there from the Idaho area from yesterday and overnight. Some of those look like distant earthquakes, not localized. Uh, but for the most part, uh, yeah, pretty quiet out there across Yellowstone. Oil fields of Texas down here still getting hit. Nothing new. That's uh, just very common. Sad to say, but very common on any given day now. Uh, Six-pointer, well, it looks like they downgraded this here. Uh, hold on a second. I thought we had a, no, maybe not. I thought we had a six-pointer out here today so far. Maybe uh, maybe it was a dream from last night. We had another six-pointer down here. Either way, it's been quite active here in the last couple days with a, a number of sixes being reported out here. Um, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six pointers, almost seven there. Uh, these five six pointers came following the arrival of that proton event that stirred up not last night, but the night before uh, a lot of uh, charged protons there being shot off from the sun, hitting the earth at the speed of light, popped up a bunch of six pointers out there shortly thereafter, uh, mainly across the western side of the Pacific plate. Uh, nothing big today. That 5.8 there is from yesterday. Hard to believe it's already into June. So that would make it a 4.7, the largest quake after midnight around the Port Vila Vanuatu region. Still early in the day, though. A couple of earthquakes there across North Island. Nothing big going on there for now. Watch it though. It's been uh, it's been moving, and there's quite a few areas that have not moved. And, you know, when things are on the move there, that's when uh, you got to be on guard. Bring this down here about the last 24 hours. Older activity there across Japan. Uh, really nothing new across the Nankai Trough. Still watching that zone right there, south coast of Japan. Uh, let's see here. Definitely been active out here in terms of broader sco the broader scope of things. A lot of... A lot of earthquakes, some big ones, and uh, more elevated in terms of the number counts out here than normal. And uh, I believe that's firmly associated with the proton event there that stirred up over the last couple days. All right, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. One earthquake there outside of, uh, eh, it looks like southwestern rift zone there of the Rift boundary of the uh, Iceland area, a couple of three stirring up. Uh, let's give a quick glance here back at space weather activity. It looks like another M flare overnight. Now, still kicking up in the auroras. When I went to bed here, about, no, it was about 11 o'clock. No, it was a little bit later than that. Um, I went outside and gave another look to the north here, Northern California. Did not see it, um, but uh, it was amplified there, G4 class range. Close to the G4, G3, G4 uh, overnight. So a lot of auroras there ramping up across the North American area. And it uh, looks like that's continuing there across the rest of the globe there where everyone's asleep. Oh, it's almost, almost looks like it's light out there 24-7 up there around that region of the uh, planet for this time of year. But uh, if you do have dark skies out there, Obviously, uh, I could see some auroras. That's going to continue. looks like that may continue into this evening for North American side as well. Uh, they're forecasting a G3-class storm. 
There's the uh, tonight's forecast there. That shows G1, but uh, it could be elevated here for the remainder of the, uh, well, for the evening here for Monday night. Nothing like what we had uh, last night, though, I believe. Flaring activity, uh, aside from that M flare, and not for sure exactly where that M flare came from. It looks like AR4100, so that's still this massive sunspot area. That's the one that produced that massive M flare uh, a couple days ago, the re and the resulting CME that we're seeing right now, the effects of the CME with the auroras. Uh, get a little bit of complexity here. This thing's been bouncing back and forth here between uh, evolving and, and uh, just kind of decaying. But there is a number of magnetic structures here lined up uh, within close proximity of one another. That uh, is interesting because that's what you want to see if you want uh, some flaring kicking up. It actually looks like it's grown more overnight. So we'll watch this area. It looks like it wants to throw off some more M flares. I don't know if we'll see any X flare activity of that or not, but uh, chance for some further M flares. Um, down south here, not really too concerned with this area. Same for the rest of these sunspots uh, on the Earth-facing side of the sun. We'll take a look here at the far side watch. This is from yesterday, so a day behind, but this does give us a general view of the, um, well, the far side of the sun. And uh, really don't see a whole lot out here. No major deep dark areas indicating, uh, you know, some decent sized sunspots. Here's the Earth-facing side, there's 4100 eastern limb back over here not a whole lot coming around the bend there so maybe entering into a little quiet period unless we get some uh, newer sunspots popping up out of the blue but most of the time that doesn't happen i mean 4100 i don't know how many times that thing has come around and repeated itself you know these sunspots can stick around for months uh, even longer and they just get renamed a different different number as they go back around the far side and then come back around in deep into the earth facing side but occasionally we get new sunspots popping up out of the blue those are the ones to watch uh, for some stronger flaring as they rapidly uh, evolve there so watch for storming tonight far as the auroras go uh, let's take a look here at any uh, close approach asteroids coming to the planet uh, this one's fairly close. This one's even closer here. A couple new, newly discovered sunspots. That's 94,000 miles. That's well within the Earth-Moon distance there. Uh, that's a 50-foot house-sized asteroid. That thing would probably make a, a decent fireball in the sky if it were to um, get close enough. But that's still relatively safe as well, uh, even for that size. I think it was a year year or two ago we had one come within about 11,000 miles so that's when I want to really dig into it and take a look at the path uh, of that asteroid on a on an orbital viewer uh, you can use these guys or there's a oh I don't know where my other one went to I got so many sites on here but I'm not really worried about that uh, right now was it this one no, that's a priority list. But anyway, those look uh, fairly safe uh, for the most part. Really not seeing anything of any uh, any worry there on that map. All right, let's check out uh, space weather activity. Or, uh, weather convection style thunderstorms. Looks like western areas here of the southern plains, including Kansas, Oklahoma, northern Texas, Got an enhanced zone here today. Uh, not really a whole lot of tornado threats. 2% though up in Nebraska. Wind, uh, looks like wind is going to be the primary threat today for severe weather. So just a heads up if you're out there around Amarillo, Texas and Dodge City, Kansas. Beautiful state of Kansas. Probably nice and green out there right now. I need to get back out there. Uh, that should continue tomorrow. Pushing further east a little bit. A uh, quick glance here at the uh, potential hurricane coming up. Let's take a look, see how these weather models have changed since last night. It looks like around the 12th or so. Uh, it's still on there. Still following the same path here up into the Gulf and headed towards uh, 
Louisiana and Texas. I know that's a ways out. A lot of people don't even like to look at these models, but why even have the models if you don't want to look at them, right? The weather models here pick up trends, pressure differences, uh, and puts it all together for a neat little layout for us humans to view. Uh, and it's called weather forecasting. These are weather maps. They help us forecast the weather and to ignore stuff like that, not really, not, not, not all that good. And, but it is a ways out here, right? Anything can change, but we got to keep an eye on it as the models here have been pretty consistent with something forming and moving into the Gulf here uh, around the 12th or 13th of this month. So I'm going to continue to check that. A lot of times these have been right. A lot of times uh, these models have been wrong. So it's just one of those things you got to watch closely. It better be prepared than uh, than to just be caught off guard. Wow, what's this hurricane doing here? Well, a couple weeks ago, this model showed you that there was going to be a hurricane in here. So not causing panic, but just got to be on guard out there. Uh, let's see what we've got. Some thunderstorm activity out there in Northern California a little bit. Uh, Yeah, it's just, it's hot. It's supposed to be 100 degrees here today in Northern California again. It's just, this is our typical summer. Uh, hundreds probably all the way till maybe September. Maybe the end of September we'll start cooling down a little bit here in Northern California. But this is, that's, that's how it is every summer. I'm so tired of it. Uh, it's just, it's hot. Anyway, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good one seismograph stations out there uh, really not showing any type of earthquake readings out there looks pretty quiet have a good one we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, monday night update unless something major happens have a good one stay safe